In this video, we're going to look at using Pythagoras' theorem in 3D. Let's start off by looking at the theorem in 2D. Here's a 2D triangle, and we can use Pythagoras to find a missing length in this triangle. So if we write that this is A, that's one of the shorter sides. The other shorter side we'll call B, and the hypotenuse, which is the longer side, and always opposite the right angle, is C. Pythagoras' theorem says that A squared plus b squared is equal to c squared in 2d. So all we have now are the two shorter sides, we square each of them, we add them together and that gives us now the hypotenuse squared. Let's look at a couple of basic examples and I'll draw some triangles and we will look at finding some missing lengths. So let's go ahead and write on now that this one is going to be, we'll have this to be 4 centimetres, so that'll be 4 centimetres, and this one is going to be 6 centimetres. We might be asked to find the value of x. So when we're using Pythagoras' theorem, we need two known sides to find the unknown one. Let's go with this one. Let's say that's 10 metres, and let's say that this is going to be 7 metres we could go ahead and find this length right here, which we'll call y meters. So we can see on this one, we need the hypotenuse. On this one, we need a shorter side. So starting here, we can say that 4 squared, that's now the short side squared, added to the other shorter side squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So 4 squared plus 6 squared is equal to x squared. That's going to give me 16. That's going to give me 36 and that will be equal to x squared. So we can say now that 52 is equal to x squared. We need to take the square root of both sides of this equation. Taking the positive value as its length, we can say now that x is going to be the root of 52. So if we look at that in a calculator, the root of 52 gives us 7.21. So if we just write this in, so 7.21, 7.21, and that is going to give us the value of x, and I've just given that to two decimal places. That seems fairly reasonable. It's certainly longer than both of the short sides, which it needs to be if it's a hypotenuse, and we've said that it's 7.21 correct to one decimal place. If you wanted a quicker way to do it, you could simply write that x was equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 6 squared. You must, though, check what level of working you're expected to show in the questions that you're answering. OK, let's look at this one. This time we have one of the shorter sides to find. So we can say that y squared plus 7 squared will be equal to 10 squared. So I'm squaring the shorter side here, the shorter side here, I'm adding them together, and that's going to give me the hypotenuse squared. So I'm going to subtract now the 7 squared from both sides. So 10 squared minus 7 squared. So that gives me that y squared is equal to 100 minus 49. y squared is equal to 51. We take the positive square root of 51. And on a calculator, that's not going to be too uh, far off this one right here. So root 51. And we can say that that is 7.14, correct to two decimal places. So let's have a look at that one. y is going to be equal to 7.14. And again, given correct to two decimal places. If this had come out to be longer than 10, I'd have to look back as the hypotenuse is now the longest side. So 7.1 gives us the value right here. If you wanted a very quick way of doing that, we could say that y is going to be equal to the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the other shorter side squared, and that would give us the answer. Again, check what you're expected to do. Let's now look at this in 3D. So what we've got here is a cuboid. I'm just going to go ahead and label up the sides. I'm going to say that this length is going to be A, this one here is going to be B, and we're going to have a height of C. I'm going to call this length here D. So the diagonal of the box is going to be called D. In three dimension, we can say now that Pythagoras' theorem is A squared plus B squared plus C squared is equal to D squared. So this time now, we're taking the sides of the cuboid, we're squaring each of them, 
we're adding them together and that gives us now the diagonal squared. Let's have a look at how that works. Let's start off now with this uh, cuboid right here. So if we want to find this length, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and just draw up some triangles. So if we look at this now, what I'm going to do is find the diagonal of a rectangle. So if I wanted this diagonal right here across the box, let's put this on, and I said now that this one is going to be, let's just call this X, and this one is going to be Y. What we could have here is Z. So we could say at this stage right now, and let's just put Z on here, we could say uh, from here, using 2D Pythagoras, we can say now that X squared plus Y squared is going to be equal to Z squared. So that's just using what we've seen before. Let's now look at adding another dimension to this. And what we'll do is put on here, and I'll say that this one is going to be W. So W is going to be the length right here. I'm now going to draw another triangle. So if we go ahead and do that, let's see if we can put this one on. Let's see what that's going to do. Uh, hopefully you can see what I'm about to draw now. What I'm going to have is another right angle triangle like so. So if I put the right angle on this one, the right angle is going to be just here. So we come out like so, and that's my right angle. So if we look from here, that length is W. This length right here is going to be Z, and I'm just going to call this one here U. Okay, so let's just put this on. So what we can do is use Pythagoras. So what we can say to find now U, and I'll make that look more like a U than a W, we can say from here now the following. We can say that U squared is equal to W squared plus Z squared. So we've got W squared plus Z squared. Now we already know from the first part that Z squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. So we can say that U squared is equal to W squared. We've got our Z squared here. Well, Z squared is equal to these two, so we can simply write plus X squared plus Y squared. So if we now go back to looking at this in terms of the A, B, C, and D, so if I just put these on, what we've got then, this one would be A, this one would be B, this one would be C, and we can see from this now that D would be U. So we've got Y squared plus X squared plus the c squared, which is w squared, is equal to u squared, which is going to give us now the d. So hopefully that gives you some idea. That's um, Hopefully it's made sense in terms of what I've done. I've just made this into two different right angle triangles. So in general, what we can say is that a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to d squared when we're finding now the diagonal of a cuboid. So let's go ahead and answer a couple of questions. So what we need to do in, with these cuboids is find the value of x. So here what we have is the diagonal. We've got three of these known sides. So what we can simply say from here now is that 5 squared plus 5 squared plus 5 squared will be equal to x squared. So just writing this out, 5 squared plus 5 squared plus 5 squared is equal to x squared. 25 plus 25 plus 25 is going to give me 75, and that is equal to x squared. And at this point, we take the square root. We don't involve any cube terms in here. I appreciate we've gone to 3D, but we're still simply looking at a length. So if we now take the cube root, uh, sorry, the square root of 75, square root of 75 tells me now that x is going to be 8.66. So we can say now that 8.66 is going to be the value of x. Let's just check I've rounded that. So 8.66 correct to two decimal places. If we look at this one right here, we can say now that x squared, so I could write it the other way around, I could say that x squared is going to be equal to 10 squared plus 3 squared plus 6 squared. All we need now are the dimensions of the three shorter sides. So x is going to be equal to the square root of 100 plus 9 plus 36. That's going to give us now the square root of 145. Square root of 145 
gives us now 12.04. So 12.04 correct to two decimal places. So 12.04. And again, check these units are all the same. Okay, if we look at this one right here, we've got the diagonal. We need to find one of the shorter sides. So in this particular case, we can say now that x squared plus the 3 squared plus the 4 squared will be equal to 8 squared. We need x in this case, obviously, to be shorter than 8. So we can say from here now that x squared is going to be equal to 64, so that's 8 squared, minus 3 squared, which is 9, minus the 4 squared, which is 16, and then we would take the square root. So x is going to be equal to the square root now of these subtracted, which should give us 39. Let's do that. 64 minus the 9 minus the 16. And that's going to give us now 39. We need the root of 39. And that is going to give me 6.24. So the root of 39, which is going to give me now 6.24. So 6.24. And that is to 2 decimal places. So all we're doing is finding a shorter side. If you wanted a quicker method, x is simply now the square root of 8 squared minus 3 squared minus 4 squared. Uh, do check what your exam wants you to do. So that's what we've done. Same with these ones, we could have just written it straight out like so. So I'll do this one fairly quickly. We've got now that x, again we've got the diagonal. So what we can say then is x is going to be equal to the square root of the diagonal squared, which is 10 squared, minus now the two shorter sides squared. So 4 squared minus the 8 squared. So if we quickly do that in a calculator, we want the square root now of 10 squared. Then we're going to subtract away from that 4 squared and we're going to subtract from that 8 squared. So that gives us now 2 root 5, which is 4.47. So we can say now that x is equal to 4.47, and that again is to two decimal places. It's obviously not an accurate drawing here, but it just gives us some idea on how to do the calculations. If you wanted to go the long way around, you could say that x squared plus 4 squared plus 8 squared would be equal to the diagonal squared, and then simply subtract these away and take the square root. So nice and logical, nice and straightforward. All we're ever using now to find the diagonal, a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to d squared. These now are the dimensions of the cuboid. So if we have our cuboid like so, what we've got here, a, b, and c, and that will give us now the value of the diagonal d. Let's finish off with a wordy question. What is the longest pencil that can fit into a pencil tin with the dimensions 2 centimetres, 7 centimetres and 14 centimetres? If we think about this, all I'm going to do is a quick sketch. And this really is a sketch. So what we're looking at now is a pencil. If you think about a pencil going into this tin, we're looking at the pencil essentially being wedged into this part right here. So if I just go ahead and do it, we're looking now at going from here, so from here, right up now to wedging it to the top just here. So if I put these values on, what we're going to have then, we'll say that this one is 2, this one is 7, and this one is going to be 14. We can simply say now that the pencil, and I'll call it P squared, that is this length right here. So the pencil length is here, is going to be 2 squared plus 7 squared plus 14 squared. So we could use an inequality. We might say that this is going to be equal to or less than. It really doesn't matter. We can say now that P is going to be the square root of 4 plus 49 plus 196, which we'll do on a calculator. What's that going to give me? The square root of 249. So square root of 249, let's find a value of that, root 249. And that will give us now on here 15.78. So that's the two decimal places. So we can say now that P is equal to 15.78, and that's 2dp. So 2dp, and let's just check I've rounded that. So we can say 15.78 centimetres. Therefore, now 15.78 centimetres 
will be now the longest. Technically, I mean, if we look at this, we should should really round down. Um, but as you can see now, two the nearest uh, two decimal places, fifteen point seven eight. We're just looking at the diagonal of a box. So there we go. That's three D Pythagoras. We're simply now finding the missing length in a cuboid.